What are you doing all the way here in uh, Rabat? Just travelling around, man. Just yeah. uh, travelling, busking. Like, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to another video here in the beautiful country of Morocco. And today, specifically, we are in the capital of Morocco, which is Rabat. And we are just getting ready. There's the wifey. Hi, morning. And uh, as you can see, we are in another Airbnb today. And in most of the places we stayed here in Morocco have been Airbnbs. And I'll show you around this beautiful Airbnb a little bit later in this video when we get back from the day, just so you guys can see and what to expect when you come to Rabat for yourself. But for now, we are gonna head out into the city, show you around some of the beautiful places of the capital city, and hopefully you enjoy it. <laughs> uh, let's get going. <laughs> This is Morocco, with a population of over 37 million people, situated in the north of Africa, a country full of culture, incredible food, beautiful architecture and fascinating people, also home to the famous Sahara Desert. So guys, we are now heading into a place called Kasbah Hodayas and for those of you who are wondering what Kasbah means in Arabic, it actually means castle. And as you can see beside me here, we are about to walk into this incredible place and it's mainly famous because it's full of museums and many nice things inside, right? You, you get to see a lot of historical sites there, mausoleum, museum and just a lot of calves. It's like just a beautiful place to wander around and it's also a UNESCO heritage site. So let's get going and check it out. Well, let's do this guys. Let's see what it's like inside of this place. Heard a lot about Rabat, the capital um, and our first impressions kind of of this city so far I would say is very very modern everything is kept very very clean and I mean coming from Casablanca where we were previously it was a little bit more on the rough side um, obviously probably an older city which makes sense but it's, there's a huge contrast bearing in mind it's only an hour drive from Casablanca to Rabat and also Rabat is a bit of an underrated city nobody talks about Rabat or stopping over here or holidaying here but it's actually uh, absolutely stunning place so we are really really excited to show it to you and there's such a big European type of influence in this place it's kind of got the Greek vibes with the white blue I'm not sure exactly why maybe you guys can let me know in the comments but they've also got these incredibly gorgeous looking doors. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I heard that door is actually shows you how wealthy the family is. The, the nicer the door, the wealthier the family, apparently. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, let us know in the comments, guys, if that's the case. Thank you, man. What's your name? Jawad. Jawad, nice to meet you. It smells very good. <laughs> Sardina. Sardines, you, ha you have a shop here? You have a yeah. shop? Yeah. We'll come and see you later. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Alright guys, we are being invited into uh, a local's house here. Oh, wow, he has a gorgeous entrance. Wow. Amazing. This is the Moroccan hospitality guys. People are so kind. Oh my god, wow. <gasps> He has the best view in town. Check that out. Wow, thank you, man. Thank you. How are you? Welcome. Good, Welcome. thank you so much. Wow, this is absolutely mind blowing. You've just got surfers down there. You've got also a graveyard, which is there. Wow, this is amazing, man. Check this out, guys. Absolutely incredible. So guys, one thing nobody actually mentioned about Rabat is the surf culture. It's very, very windy here, which makes it a great place for surfers. So if that's something that you're interested in doing, there's plenty of surfers down this beach here, all just enjoying a nice morning surf. Oh, 
Oh, that was quite a great experience, guys. Just randomly walking and uh, having somebody invite us into his backyard and just basically saying, come check this out. I've got a hidden view. Essentially, that's what he was uh, alluding to, to bring us in. Wow, absolutely gorgeous. Imagine waking up to that every morning here. Not too bad. Thank you, brother. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, man. So many kind people here in town in Rabat, as well as most places here in Morocco. Right, now, off we go. And finally try to get to the actual Kasbah, because so far we've not got there yet. So guys, this is absolutely gorgeous. This is essentially the Kasbah. You walk through these really, really quiet, relaxed streets and each of these houses have got such beautiful, unique designs to them. And you just it's a very, very peaceful thing to do when you come to Rabat. Probably great to start your day off here just to get the good feel for the culture and see how people live. And wow, so honestly, I'm blown away. Like really, really beautiful. I'm jealous. I wish I lived in one of these houses. Hello. Hello. How are you, brother? You okay? So guys, that uh, security guard that you just saw a minute ago was basically saying there was a specific area in the Casbah area where I wasn't allowed to film and I think it was basically because the uh, the family of Dar Bakr uh, live around there so they were like, you can only use your iPhone to take like photos and uh, videos but honestly it was literally just a square so there's really nothing that you're missing out on that I'm not showing you right now but anyway guys, carry on our journey here to find a nice coffee shop so we can grab a cappuccino let's have a little walk down this street it looks quite nice. We have some artwork to my left. It's just literally the whole area is just beautiful doors, beautiful white walls. It's just so so picturesque, guys. It's stunning. All right, guys. So our brother here, he's taken us to go have a coffee. Yeah. Initially, we thought he was trying to sell us something, yeah. but he's taken us for a coffee. Apparently, it's got a nice view as well. <laughs> oh wow, check this out guys, a very narrow stairs to get to the top, it seems like it's going to be a rooftop. Oh thank you so much. Oh wow, wasn't expecting this when he came over guys, but wow, really gorgeous, shukran. <laughs> so sometimes it's worth just uh, listening to what the guys have to say to you when you're walking because they know the hidden spots and this is no exception. What's your first impression so far of Rabat? Very peaceful, very very nice. I actually feel like I enjoy Rabat more than I enjoyed Marrakesh. Maybe yeah. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean guys, uh, Marrakesh is a very very hectic city and we were actually wondering on the drive here why most people actually go there but I guess we feel like it's probably the, the probably the culture hub of Morocco because there's just so much culture there when you actually do arrive. Crazy for tourism, a lot of people there but also we know that it's also a very party hot, hot spot so we know a lot of people go there to have a good party and a night out and nightlife is supposed to be very very nice there. Uh, maybe on the way back to Marrakesh on towards the end of this series we might be able to show you a bit of that nightlife but for now we're just going to enjoy Rabat these beautiful views and have a coffee and just take it all in. And guys, one thing that I do want to mention here about the people of Morocco is the intelligence of how many language they, languages they can speak. They can speak uh, Moroccan Arabic, they can speak Berber, French and Spanish, a majority of the time English as well. So that's almost four or five languages. And uh, just sipping away at the coffee here, and we're just like actually discussing this topic. Very, very educated people here in Morocco, guys. Very, very educated. Guys, we've just finished up our coffee break and as we're walking downstairs we actually saw this room here which is really beautiful it's got kind of the moroccan style outline for the windows and just a gorgeous spot for you just to sit down and enjoy that view so guys when you come to rabat make sure you come and check out dar al dar al karam fatima and you'll be met by the friendly locals here no i mean and so very nice to meet you guys thank you so thank much you. thank you, thank you. 
Uh-huh. Can you give us some uh, special uh-huh. water? Anna! 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 Absolutely. Anna! Uh-huh. 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 Okay, I was hoping he was going to push some on my hand, but that was better. Uh-huh. 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 Smells good? Uh-huh. Good, good. Good, good. Hack, 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 hack. Can I have some? Oh! Mmm, it's like rose water, yeah? It's very nice. Shukran, my friend. Wow, wow, Shukran. wow, wow. One of the wow. Kind, kindest wow. man in Rabat. <laughs> wow. Shukran, bye bye. Bye bye. Hello, Ma. Salam. 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 Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Love this guy. Love him. <laughs> he's still going, he's still going. So I think we're going to go check out the next area now guys. I hope you enjoyed this area because it's absolutely stunning. And make sure you do come and have a latte up there because it's a great spot and you get to meet our guy. He can sprinkle a bit of rose water on you. <laughs> yeah, oh, look at our little friend. Hello. I think he's having a baby, she's having a baby. A bit fake. And we couldn't leave the, uh, this beautiful Kasbah without saying bye to our brother here. Shukran, man. He's the legend that showed us the area of the viewpoint where the surfers were. Shukran, my friend. Bye-bye. Cristiano. Yes, brother. Oh, what's he giving us? Oh, shukran. Shukran. So kind. Thank you so much. Shukran. Thank you. One is one is okay. It's too much. Oh, oh shukran. So He's so Arabic. kind. Thank you so much. Shukran, shukran. This is fish. Fish and oh, very nice. Got some fresh fish here, guys. Got some with batter. You never work alone. Oh no, bro. No. It's Manchester United. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get uh, taunted everywhere I go because I'm a Man United top. But I actually wore this top today in Rabat specifically because I know the football culture is huge here. So also wanted to show my support to my team. Let me know who you support in the comments, guys. I'm sure you have already done that. If you haven't already, then do it now. And don't forget to subscribe as well. All right, guys, we are now heading into the Rabat Medina. So we've been to every single Medina in every city that we've gone into so far. And we've actually really been intrigued at how different each one is. Starting at Marrakesh, which was incredibly hectic and busy. However, we've heard here in Rabat, it's a little bit more chilled out, not so hectic. So as we walk through now, it's got the uh, cycles walking back in time, isn't it? It is, yes. It's like incredible. And I love how chilled out it is. Yeah. Spoke too soon. Motorbike just drives by. <laughs> At least it's one, not like 10 all at the same time. Yeah, like Marrakesh. Well, hopefully, guys, we're going to find something weird and wonderful to buy here. Let's see what we can get. So, like most of the Medinas here in Morocco, as you are walking through, you'll have all the kind of lovely things that they're selling, such as their really nice leather goods. And we're actually heading over to Fez very soon, which is going to be the place where the majority of the leather comes from here in Morocco. A very, very famous place where they actually tan it. So we're looking forward to seeing that as well and showing you guys. But so far, this place is almost too good to be true at how calm it is. Not one person yet has actually said to uh, come to their shop or maybe because we're not there yet. Or ask for money. <laughs> yeah, or ask for it's money actually. It's very refreshing to be honest. Oh, yeah, because everywhere we've gone, we get asked for money. I mean, I don't mind sometimes, but when you're asked for it 10 times, in the hour it can get a bit uh, annoying yeah. yeah overwhelming and annoying we don't mind helping the locals here as we have been doing throughout our trip all right so it looks like now we are officially walking inside the market area and how you can tell is when the roofs are, are covered by wood like wow okay this is very similar to what do you think Eswera or it's, i think it's totally different again yeah. In, in the types of products that they sell, in the way it's being positioned and even the decor of the ceilings, it's uh, quite lovely. Uh, yeah, very, very peaceful here, guys. I mean, it is before 12 o'clock, so I guess one thing to notice in Morocco is things don't start very early here. It's mainly in the afternoon when things start to get very, very hectic. So guys, we stopped off at this market here. To, um, to see how our brother can hook us up with a good deal. So these look quite cool. And uh, they got some nice shirts. Come and try. What do you think guys? Let me know in the comments. It's nice. Yeah, let me try this. Yeah. It's nice. 
Chip of your uh, Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> voilà. And fabric. It's got a not synthetic fabric. Mm, what do you think? You can share me. What do you think, guys? Let me know. Feeling quite Moroccan in this. Yeah. This is like Moroccan you're style. Like, you are like Moroccan. Moroccan, yeah. <laughs> yes. Coming from north of Morocco. Yeah, that's Coming it. from Tangier or oh, well. Shifshire, when like this. Yes. Why in Tangier they look like me? Like me, 100%. Ah, okay. Yes. You, you don't never been... Uh, We're going Tangier. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow you find yeah. uh, all people like you. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone looks like me in Tangier, guys. So We're going to fit yeah. right in, yes. What do you think? you like this? I do, but I think the lighter version was nicer. Yeah, the lighter one. Let me try the other color. Oh, it's one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like a lighter one. version, yeah. You go like this. And uh, Manchester no. United no, because now hot, I don't I don't want to get this uh, sweaty. Okay. I want yeah. this for a nice day, you know, a nice meal, yeah, for, uh, nice food, food, evening. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, so tell me my friend how much we're doing for this. Well, normally it costs 220. Oh, but I make you a good price. I make you a Kurdistan price. Please. Yes. Yeah, like Kurdistan I'm, price. Uh, I'm very uh, poor. <laughs> well, well, everybody knows it's poor. Exactly. Everybody knows exactly. it's poor. <laughs> so, to be honest, do, I have do, a, I do have, us a Kurdish price. I was looking for something like this. Yes. But I had a budget. budget. And it goes with your uh, Sam. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But know, honestly, well, our budget, look. budget was for me really around 80, 90. Budget. <laughs> 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 uh, moment of truth guys let's see uh, how much you'll do it for it looks really nice it's, this is cotton and it's not going to shrink in the wash let's see what we can get let me check okay habibi so what are we saying what are we saying how much you can do this give me 220 220 150 bro best give me 200 dirham 200 200 not so much my friend it is 150 i can do 200 is my friend no, no, no. Oh, the <laughs> man. Uh, let's see if we can get the, uh, the right deal for this. Um, so, brother, what are you saying? 150. I can't roll that, bro. Give me 180. No, 50. 50. 180, 180, 150, bro. 150, man. She likes large. Yeah, okay. Go for 150, guys. Alright, guys, so we've agreed to do 150 for that. Thank you, brother. Look, he's a rich man. Uh, yeah, a proper rich man. Dirham, I'm a rich man. Yeah, he's a rich <laughs> man. I don't know, let me know in the comments, guys. Is that worth it for the top or did I get ripped off? Seems like a good guy. I gave him change. Give me 50, 50 back. Change. Shukran, brother. <laughs> okay, Thank no you problem. so much. You are big Take care. Yeah. Bye. All right, guys, I'm going to be honest. I'm quite happy with that purchase. I think I might have paid a little bit over. But I guess that's expected when you are a tourist, essentially. But I really like the top. And I've been looking at them throughout the whole time here in Morocco. So maybe you'll see me wearing it in Tangier. We just had the, our first rude encounter with a local here. I was just filming and he was like, move why are you standing there i want to walk through it was like, all right dude anyway we are carrying on through the markets now and it just goes on and on and on it's actually larger than expected and now it's getting a little bit more busier you can hear the hustle and bustle coming about it's, things just got very hectic here we've literally got like a, i don't know what it is like a whole a whole school behind us Okay, I'm very busy. Looks like it's a school trip. I'm not sure which school, but if you're from this school, let me know in the comments. I'm quite interested. It's so, so busy here. This is probably the hectic part of the market, and it's the outside. It's only busy because of kids. Yeah. They probably really finish school and coming to make trouble in the market. And that's it. They're coming to do a bit of shopping before they go home. You can see everyone is getting a little bit excited by the cameras here. So. Anyway, so what else are we going to get? Everyone's saying hello in the background, I can hear them and see them. So guys, we've got Arthur from Sheffield here. What's the bag? You alright? Were you doing all the way here in uh, Rabat? Just travelling around, man. Just yeah? uh, travelling, busking. Like, uh... Amazing, man. Nice to meet <laughs> Where you. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from London. From London. So 
So guys, that guy that was playing the guitar, his name is Arthur, and he's actually from Sheffield in the UK. Such a small world. You wouldn't think you're going to walk and just see somebody uh, from the UK playing the guitar in Morocco. But he is very, very talented, guys. And uh, it's nice to meet a fellow Brit in town. So guys, this bit now that we're walking through is a little bit more on the uh, old school type of market that you expect. Um, very, very cheap things here. Things for like 30 dirhams, 20 dirhams, 50 dirhams. So it's basically changed from that more luxury side of the market. So far guys, I'm probably gonna say that this is uh, one of my favorite markets on Medina that I've been to so far. What about you? Yeah, definitely. I feel like you are in a European market, to be honest, the way people conduct themselves and the way things are. Yeah, it's uh, definitely not as crazy and hectic as the other places we've been to. I already mentioned that a few times. But every time I say that, a tractor goes by. <laughs> it's just mad. A tractor or a motorbike. I love the attention to detail that people of Morocco have. Like, look at that. It's so, so nice. They even like have attention to detail on their spices. Like, it's just incredible. I would love to know a little bit more about the, the kind of culture and the artistic ways of the Moroccan people. And guys, if you're a local here and you want to share some of those details with me and some other people that are watching this video, my question to you is where did it all start and how did the uh, Moroccans get inspiration to have such unique designs and artistic ways because honestly everywhere we've gone it's just been so so unique and there's nowhere like it in the world I mean there may be some places that have inspiration from Morocco but it's nothing like actually being here and seeing it for itself all right guys so we are now I believe out of that uh, Getting hectic market, shall I say? Yeah. It's getting a bit busy for you? Too much? Yeah, I'm to be honest, energy really affects me and when it's so energetic it just really drains me, so I had to I had to leave. <laughs> yeah. I mean uh, let me know in the comments guys, I'm very curious uh, as a viewer. Do you enjoy the crazy interactions with people or do you prefer the more calm and scenic type of things? Very interested to hear your thoughts on that. Personally for me I love getting involved with the locals, but I guess I guess for the ladies it can be a bit too much. I love it too, but all in moderation. <laughs> yeah, it's very true because it does take a lot of energy. But I love, uh, I think it's one of the best ways actually as a traveler, when you go to countries, is actually just to go dive deep into areas that make you feel uncomfortable and uh, just try to learn the culture and be around them, let people talk to you, let them shout at you, let them do whatever they want. To truly showcase their reality, right? Yeah, just to basically see how they communicate and what they say to you and so on and so forth. That's, that's the way how you really get to know how amazing people here actually are. Hello my friend, how are you? Come say hi, come, come, come. Come say hi. Come on. Come on, we got some local boys. How are you brother? What's the, what team is this? Morocco. 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 Oh. That's Hakimi. Oh, Hakimi. Hakimi. Yeah. Oh, Jeez, they're, they're big here in Morocco Hakimi. for football. Which uh, do you like, Manchester United? Yes, oh, yes. Cristiano, Cristiano, Cristiano. Si. 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 Thank you. Guys, love that, guys. Love meeting the local lads. And as I say, they love football here. And uh, let me know who you support, guys, when you're watching this. All right, guys, it's getting towards lunchtime now and we are very, very hungry. So we're going to head over to a restaurant. You'll find out very shortly. It's uh, supposed to be very, very nice because it is on the seaside. So we're getting quite hungry with all the walking around and vlogging and giving you guys a good overview of what this incredible market, town, city of Rabat is actually like. On the way on from our walk to the restaurant, we come across this incredible site here and I wasn't sure what it was. And it's just a huge graveyard, but to be honest, one of the most beautiful I've seen around the world. Super colorful. Wow. Right opposite the sea. All right, guys, we have made it to our restaurant and it's called Borj Edar. You see it? Very nice. Let's have a look. It's got like a castle entrance vibe. Okay. So guys, it looks like it's just us here in the restaurant. Hope that means. I hope it's a good thing. I'm not gonna... <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's check the menu. Oh, wow. Uh, but I guess we get to see out here, which is really nice. Look at this.
All right, guys, we have just got our food. We've got two big sea breams here with some saffron rice, some vegetables, and we're just going to enjoy eating it now with this beautiful view in front of us. Guys, I'm not really a huge seafood seafood eater, but this is so delicious. Super fresh sea bream. We've got these round potato balls, hard on the outside, but soft on the inside. Excuse me, since when are you not a seafood eater? I don't really have seafood that much. You love fish. I love fish, but I don't really have it all the time. <laughs> I prefer kind of your lambs or chickens. <laughs> All right guys, and that is our lunch officially finished. And that came to 33 euros, which is 330 Moroccan dirhams. And that wasn't too bad for that really, really nice dish. So we had some water and we had also two uh, lovely sea bream dishes. So now we're gonna head to the next destination here in Rabat, which is called the famous Hassan Tower, right? That's right, yeah. Anything special about this place? Um, it's basically a, a, an ancient ancient ruin. They have attempted to build the mosque, but only minaret is available at the moment, so it should be quite interesting to see it. Yeah, and um, we'll uh, take you there in about three seconds. All right, guys, we have officially made it over to the Hassan Tower. And one thing I must say, the whole area is very, very royal, right? Yes, We've, definitely is. You've got all the Moroccan flags, really, really amazing. And we're about to go over to the two, I believe, look like the royal guards of Morocco. Let me show you. Well, the prince name is Hassan. Yes. Morocco's prince is Hassan. Uh, very, very loved out here, isn't he? Yeah, he is, exactly. Can I film? Uh, video no all right guys these are the guards that you saw behind me but unfortunately i wasn't able to get a full-on video with them uh, for some reason they wasn't too keen on having a video however we have just arrived which seems to be the huge square here these are all ancient ruins it's unfortunately unfinished mosque so what's left over here is just the actual tower and some structures this was commissioned in 12th century and i think they've left it like that because it just makes for a great um, attraction isn't it yeah, it uh, definitely gives you that Romany type of vibe with all the pillars everywhere. Wow, look at the size of this absolute huge standing building. It's the only thing that's left here. I wonder what they use it for nowadays. Because I believe there's like two mosques which are on the corner over there, one there and one over there. But just basically what this area is, I'd probably highly recommend coming to check it out because it's just one of those tourist attractions that you have to come and see because the outside of this actual area itself has a beautiful view over the city of Rabat, which I'm about to show you very shortly as well. A picture now? A video? No. Uh, Are you that one? No, no. Ah, oh, for the... the... Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. All right, guys, a bit of an anti-climax, unfortunately. As I was filming uh, the beautiful area where we just were, the Hassan Tower, I was approached by three, like, undercover cops, with, like, walkie-talkies and whatever you want to call it. They were just basically questioning me, like, interrogating me, like, oh, um, what are you filming? What do you do? It's this and that. And I was just like, I'm just vlogging, you know, for my YouTube channel, just showing Morocco, the beautiful country, and all the nice things you have in Rabat. And then, um, then he asked for my passport picture, which I showed him on my phone, which he took a picture of. And then he made me speak to one of his majors on the phone. And his major was saying something like, who asked you to uh, film in this place? I said, nobody, I'm just filming to show your country. This is what I do, you know, I make nice videos. And then he was like, but have you got permission? He was very rude, to be honest, not very, not very pleasant. And then he was like, I said, no, because nobody said I need to have permission to film in this place. Anyway, he was like, all right, well, so you don't have permission, basically. And I was like, I just said no, because nobody said you need permission. Anyway, he was like, give me back to the officer that's with you very abruptly. So he passed me back to him. And I don't know what he said to him on the phone, but he was basically said to him something like, do this or that with him. But to be fair to the undercover police officers, he said he was trying to help me in the situation. But help me for what? You know, like, what were they planning to do to me or us? Like, 
you know it's just crazy it really really made us feel very very uneasy and it's probably the most uncomfortable situation i've had here in morocco i think um there was just no need for that there was everyone else with their phones making videos but just because i've got a sony camera with us you know little microphone i'm all of a sudden a professional you know i'm just a vlogger here and showing the country of morocco to the world i'm very very disappointed with that anyway not too sure if i want to film any more here in uh, rabat but if there's more after this moment then i have if not then there's not all right guys after a lot of deliberation and thoughts we thought we're not going to let that one incident ruin our day even though it has ruined our mood to be honest like honestly it just really makes you feel shitty you know when something like that happens it's just not nice at all i'm still even pissed off now talking about it but anyway let's try to uh, show you guys some more beauty what's this whistling 